If you came to this video looking to have a show more button on your repeating group and yet you're struggling to do that while also having some kind of filter on your repeating group, then this is the video that's gonna show you how to set that up. Before we dive into the bubble editor, you're gonna to get to see two things here. One of those things is just generally speaking what it is that we're gonna build in this video so you can just learn and figure out right away, right now, if this is the video for you. Uh, the second thing that you're gonna learn is we're gonna walk away from this. We're not gonna do all four of these tags. It's a little bit time tedious, but you'll learn a method. We'll, we'll do both. Uh, we'll, do a, we'll do it with three and then we'll explain it with two, which is the easier version. So we'll tackle the hard version in this video. Uh, and that way you'll be set to uh, do as many different types of filters that you might wanna have. Uh, on this. So let's, with those two items out of the way, let's check out um, what it is that we're going to go and build. So we're going to do a bit of a tear down here for what's existing here in the back end. But basically, I'm going to show you, I'm going to leave a few things and then I'll tear those down as well. Um, but basically, what we are set up with here is we have a repeating group, this group group repeat, no, RG, this RG, that has a bunch of conditionals on it depending on how the filters are set up. Now, this is why we're not gonna be doing four in this video, is because that is gonna get a little bit hairy. <laughs> but, uh, what I, so, first things first, uh, I'm sure that if you've been looking for show, show more buttons, maybe you've seen other ones out there and s watched other videos, but if you haven't, I'm, I'm gonna give a recap of how this show more button and everything is set up. The repeating group is set up to have a, a list of items that repeats only up to or only shows up to a certain amount based upon a state. And again, I'm kind of assuming that a lot of folks have already seen the other videos out there that give this, but they haven't gone the step further to add in filters and that's the point of this video. So let's go ahead and let's take a look just real briefly at uh, so there's some additional setup here, but I'm just going to call this one for our more simplicity sake of this one uh, Photo count. So that photo count means that six of these are going to start showing right away and From that point what we can see in our repeating group here is that it goes up to it grabs the items so in your world you're going to get a list of data and You're going to have that you know show up here in your repeating group I'm going to assume that you've already gotten that part you know, established and, and are comfortable doing that. And then we use this items up until number and this, and likely you've probably already experimented around with that to get a show more button working. And then so how this show more button works, essentially, is that we start out with a, a particular amount of numbers. We saw six there in the state where it was set up. And then we have this thing set up here where when that button is clicked for the show more, that the the photo count takes where it is and then it adds two and I added two here just because I don't have a ton of things in my repeating group and so I can we can see the the interactivity slowly do its thing <clears throat> cool so uh, and I'll just refer that if anyone else has any more questions on those types of things just search show more on uh, YouTube and you'll be able to find you know videos that go to the details but uh, to recap that part again it's you need a state variable um, that starts out as a number, has a default value. In your repeating group, you uh, you get your data items up until that number. You create a show more button of some kind for whatever uh, whatever it is, whatever um, whatever style you want to do. You set it to have a workflow where it increments that, and that's that. And then, oh, last thing though, and then you also once once it reaches. So I'm going to look just at this top expression and I'll share some of this other stuff. So actually, uh, some of this other stuff, it was it existed because on this page there were four different tags. It made a ton of different, uh, more than this, this is what we're working with today, but it made a ton of different uh, potential conditional statements that would it need to be true or not depending on what filters are selected in order for this thing to be looking at the right list comparatively. And if that doesn't make sense, what I mean by comparatively is, again, there are other resources out there that speak to this, but I'll touch on it here, is that we're looking at the repeating group's uh, count of photos. And so it's like, oh, 
it's got six of them, well, it's gonna have six of them to start. If that's greater than the total number of photos that are there for this particular item, uh, this conditional may or may not exist. Again, the the particulars of how I'm getting lists of data here is not the important thing. You'll be getting them differently. So your you'll be, but you'll still be using your repeating groups list of whatever stuff is in it, its count, and then you'll be searching for all of the available stuff in your database as it relates to that, and then you'll be getting that count. So when this one finally, it's mostly it's that it's equal to this one, um, then it means it's shown to everything. The greater than equal to is um, kind of, I don't know, above and beyond. Uh, actually, no, there is no equal to. Well, so we could say is. And that, that statement would work as well. But I like to think in the worlds of math, so uh, it's more helpful for how I in, enjoy uh, or prefer to think about it. That's, that's it. That's done. We're done with the show more button. What we're going to concern ourselves now with then is these filters. And so actually on the repeating group itself, we're going to get rid of a bunch of these conditionals because they were the setup when you have four of these, but you'll be able to get it when you need, if you have four or five or 10 or one or two after this. So basically what you're gonna learn is um, all that you would need to know to set up your setup so that you can use filters and, the, and a show more button. And the reason why there are extra conditionals here is because this comparative thing, it has to be changed uh, depending on what the what filter is selected because if we're looking at uh, let's see let's try and find it where it would shrink the list uh, it might not be working because I'll have to refresh it so let's try that first but what I'm explaining here is that so we can see Well, it's shrunk a little bit. <laughs> um, and because I've removed some things, maybe maybe some stuff is broken. But the point is, <clears throat> is that the list that you're searching against for this one is actually, it, it shrinks. So, uh, and this one shrinks too, based upon the repeating group having some filters done on it. So you might have a bunch of stuff in the database that is a long list. And I'm taking the time to explain this in detail for those that would like to get it. And then for those that also just want, hey, Joe, just give me the solution, bro. Um, we're, we're getting there. So um, the list that's in the database, or sorry, the list that's on the repeating group, this, the, the first comparative statement here, that list is going to shrink when this, when it's filtered. If that list shrinks, uh, it's never going to get big enough to <clears throat> to be to be equal to to this one. So this condition would never be true, which means the show more button would always show, even when there's more stuff not to show. That's the important point that I was driving at with that detailed explanation, which is why you know for anyone that is uh, uh, aiming to increase their bubble knowledge. This channel, we're going at it. We're going into all the details. So, uh, Joe, how do we set this up? Is what someone out there is asking, I'm sure. So how we set this up is that, first off, let's see, uh, we're gonna have a number of conditionals on this repeating group. Right now, this, this thing goes out and it finds all the stuff, uh, but then we want to set up some things when uh, we've started to fill in these these uh, drop downs, and so basically, I've already outlined this for three of the things, and so we're going to go ahead and uh, first we're just going to build this with three of the things, and then we're going to delete delete it. So let's just clear that. So we have a drop down uh, product value. We're going to start with tag so it's not empty. So that's our first conditional. And and I'll show this in a second. It'll make sense. Um, so this photo, so we got tag, we've got product value. It is empty because we're not using that one yet. 
and drop down dimensions value is empty because we're not using that one yet. So now I can go over here and delete this user one. Okay, and that broke that one as well. So let me let me just make sure. So this is drop down. We're gonna say tag. Just want to see the setup quick. Is empty, is empty, is empty. Got it. And product and dimension. Okay, so what are we doing here? We're getting the first set of conditional setup. And I'll explain this in one second. I want the tag one to be first just because I ended up doing the tag one first in all of these conditionals. Um, so let's let's uh, let's now let's now look at this from a set of three filters here. With those three filters, here are all the possible scenarios. The tag drop down it has a value. The other two doesn't doesn't. The product drop down. So actually, let's refresh this so we can get a visual on that. So tag product dimension. The product dimension has a value and the other two don't. Or the dimension value, one has a value and the other two don't. Okay, that's some possible scenarios. The other possible scenario is that the tag and product have values and then the other one doesn't. Or the tag and dimension one have values and the other one doesn't. Or the product and dimension one, for our last one here, has it and the tag one doesn't. So there's that. And then there's the final one here where they all have that. So these, again, if you came to this video and you're looking to figure out how to add um, filters to a repeating group with a show more button, we're gonna get there. And amazing job to hang in. This is a longer one, this is more detailed, um, but I want to give folks the answers that they were looking for because I know that uh, some of the content out there can be pretty base level. And what we're aiming to do here is that um, we're aiming to match this content, or I'm aiming to match the content that is produced here that matches what is actually out there as a requirement when you're building things in the world of software development. Let's just be honest, it's not the most straightforward and it's not the most easiest, but I hope that you're finding this tutorial to be that, or at least by the end you will think that. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's, let's rock and roll on this. So what we have here is we, ne we have a conditional on our repeating group. So we're working on the repeating group and we're looking at the data. Under normal circumstances, it just goes and gets the data and displays it up to a specific amount of time. And then the show more button with its fancy workflow goes and is like, it increments it. So we can see that, amazing. And then when it's done incrementing, it hides itself, awesome. But so we can see here that if we start to play around with this, in certain ways, this blue square comes back on there. And why does this blue square come back on there? Because the conditional that is on it, and we'll get to that in a moment, I'm, I'm kind of following a few threads of thought. This conditional, the list of stuff in the photos could never be equal to that because, uh, because the, the, this list, this first part of this expression is gonna be, always be smaller because it's filtered. Like it has less stuff. You have a list and then if you filter some stuff out, you have a smaller list. <laughs> and if that smaller list can never uh, be equal to this one and this says, hey, time to hide it, you'll never reach that condition. And perhaps that's what you might have been struggling with if you were um, spending the time to build something with a repeating group with a show more button that also includes these drop down tags. So. Let's dive in then onto what we need to have happen here for, there's two things. There's one on the repeating group. We need it to be filtered for the data source according to, according to these conditions. What exactly is the condition? And we've listed them all out. They're finite. There's seven of them. It's not bad. So not 15 of them like with four. And if there was two of them, uh, there'd be even less. There might even be like three or four. So, and we'll just take a look at what that would be at the end. We'll, 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 we'll build the full thing for those curious so that there can be solid understanding and learning, and then we'll back it out down to two uh, 
uh, drop downs so that if that's the scenario that you're working in, uh, then then you're good. And and we'll we'll even bonus bonus extra value here today, folks. We'll even do it for one. But let's so let's get started on this. So we basically this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a second one of these. And so we have tag has a value and the other ones don't. So here tag is not empty, it has a value and the other ones don't. Okay, so when that case is true, we can look at this expression here for this and I'm actually gonna back this out so you can see the very basics of this. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the very basics of our, we just have a data type that has a list on it. And again, data type list, and then we get items until that specific photo count. But here, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to say that, okay, so because we're dealing with a list here and we're going to assume it's not super long, we can just, we're going to use our filtered thing here. Now, in the world of data, if you use the filtered item, it's going to go get all of the stuff, bring it to the browser, and then filter it. That's always not necessarily always the best option. So what we might want to do if, if you had a large data set and you were doing a search for, um, so in this case, the data source is going to be what we call a brand in this particular world of things. And we're going to say that it is where the unique ID of this brand is equal to the current users and this is just some stuff specific to this app of finding finding this. But it's like, okay, so here we're dealing with the particular brand, thing of stuff that we want to have happen. And then we can also say that for the uh, brand photo, ah, no, okay, I take it back. In, the, in my world of data, I'm actually making a search for this one. So you can see how easy it is um, when it comes to the world of data and planning these things out. Everyone makes mistakes. So you're not alone out there. <laughs> just me, just me over on this side of the screen. I'm alone here making mistakes. Search for brands, uh, brand photos. So these photos where, let's see what our options are. So we can say where the brand is equal to the current users list the brand's first item because usually they just have one for this particular world. But so now we're looking at tags. And so we can say that the tag contains the drop down. Uh, let's see. We're going to start with this one. So this drop down is tag value. So uh, I know there was a long moment in there about this data source and the search for stuff, but I'm going to say that if your data, here's the, here's the distinction and, and, and principle to follow. If your list is short and you don't need to search for it, it's already on an object that's, or it's already on a, a data type that's, you know, being worked on on the page and you just say, hey, go grab, a, go grab this user's list of followers or go grab this user's list of favorite recipes or whatever that they favorited, then just go grab that. But if you need to do a search for things and then and grab that and then filter by it. But if you need to do a search for things and you're querying stuff that's hundreds of items potentially, then use this search for feature and then add your uh, filtering stuff here is what I would suggest because it's going to run faster. Amazing, all, this, all these tips today. Okay, so we've been able to knock out this one. Now we're going to turn on the afterburners, folks. So here we go. Buckle up. So now this one is empty. And we're going to our next one here that's not empty. That's product. So for this data source, what we do is we come in here, and this is where the magic happens, folks, is that the product for this one. So again, it's going to depend, like your data type, it needs to have... The way that this data type is set up is that these brand photos, they have, uh, so this is my type data brand photo. It has stuff on there where, uh, as you can see here, 
stuff to, to filter by. So these filters here need to match the filters up here. Uh, and I'm sure many, you know, many people already know that, but I'm pointing it out just in case for someone who is maybe at a more beginner level and you're, you're stretching yourself on this video. And if you are, then, you know, uh, amazing work today. So the product contains the drop down for this product's value. Cool. All right, next up. So now we've tackled this one. And then we're going to add a data source here. And then set, instead of products, our last one is dimension. And that one equals, because this one just happens to be an option set, in this case, drop down dimensions value. And so that's why you'll notice sometimes you have things where this image, well, not the image. Uh, The product contains or doesn't contain because it's a text, whereas uh, the image, that's a particular value. Uh, the brand, that's a particular value. And so that's that's what's up. All right. So now we have accomplished dimension one. Great. Uh, we just want to make sure that we also update this here. Is empty, is empty, is not empty for dimension. And we're looking for dimension here. Next conditional. Uh, let's start it off with this one. So we have the tags one is not empty. The products one is not empty. Uh, the drop down I'm, I'm, I'm referring to. And then so for the data source on that one, we'll just get a leg up from that particular one. So it's already got tags. Now we just need to add products. Contains the drop down for the products value. Okay, great. And notice you could add some kind of sort by for the stuff that's showing up in your repeating group. You can get fancier. This uh, That's not in the scope of this video. So we're not going to do products now. We're going to say that one is empty and then we're going to look for not empty for the dimension. For the data source, we're going to copy this first one again because that limits the number of clicks. We, only, we don't need to delete anything. We just need to add something, the dimension. Great. Okay, so now we have, let's see, we've done tag and product and tag and dimension here. So tag, not empty, product, not empty, dimension empty, tag, product. Tag, not empty, product is empty, dimension not empty, so we should say tag and dimension here, tag and dimension. Cool. It's always good to check your work. Uh, so then your bubble stuff, you crush it, because that's what we're about here. Crush and bubble. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to paste this into there. I'm going to paste... Uh, this one into there. Well, let's see. We'll get a leg up on this product. And, yep, I'm all over the place. Here we go. So this, this, this is the one we want. Starting with product, and then we're also adding not empty for dimension because we're looking for product and dimension on our this thing here. And so we have product dimension equals Dimensions drop down, value, and then we'll say good, good to go. And then now we only have one more case where they all have a value. And so I can just copy and paste this one in. And then uh, I think it's the product one that we'll say is not empty. And then for our data source, we'll copy this, paste that in, and then we'll also add tag here. Cool. All right, so that takes care of all of the conditionals on the repeating group. And if we were to go over here, we can see that we'll get some nice filtering. Depending on what, what values. 
but we can see that our show more button is a little bit janky. Okay, and you know what? Uh, as I was explaining this, I was realizing, I was like, if, in case anybody else was noticing, it sure didn't look like everything was filtering um, the way that you would think it would filter with all of this. And so I went back and checked, and I was like, oh yeah, when this one, this one needs to be, is not empty for all these. So is not empty, is not empty, is not empty. And of course, uh, it's good to, it can be good to, and that's why we saved uh, this list so, it's, so we can go back to it and we can double check our work. But we're going to double check just by taking a look here at this. So I'm going to show more for everything. I'm going to filter by tag. So it gets smaller, but the show more button comes back because it's weird. It hasn't been fixed yet. And so we can see, okay, those ones, those ones seem to all do stuff. That seems to do stuff. Sort of looking good there. The dimension one. Filtering by different dimensions. All right, so let's look for one of these ones with a lot, and then we'll see if we can filter by that. So, okay, that one's, that, that, that's working. Um, we've verified it's working. It just happens that adjustment is in all of these. And then we can verify that this one is also working with it too. That we've got, you know, as we add more filters, we can see it shrink. Whereas just a moment ago, we added more and it like got bigger and you're like, probably the screen like what 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 gives dude I thought this was a good tutorial so uh, not empty not empty not empty and then that's why creating a list like this of all the possible draw uh, conditionals that are all the possible permutations and scenarios that could exist it's going to be your uh, uh, guide to follow your map as it were so now let's turn our attention and let's tackle this show more button so I've already got something up here and I'm going to I'm going to back it out to this point and this is the original condition and this condition would be if you have seen those other videos that I've uh, re referenced out there and I believe I, I first stumbled across this in a forum and I was like oh this is cool and then I just noticed that um, there was also another video about it as well so I was like sweet this show more thing is really helpful it helped me out a lot but then I took it a step further with these um, conditional or filters rather and so what we have here then is uh, a challenge to solve that is related to all of these same conditionals being in place and then what's happening with this show and hide more we're just gonna bust through this here's the solution so we're gonna say and uh, tag drop downs value it is em it, it is empty and uh, Product drop downs value is empty and uh, dimensions drop down product value is empty. Now I'm saying they're all empty here because that's we've added a layer onto the original thing here and they're all empty. So it's going to work normal. So, so we actually have like uh, something that's a little bit special here. There's a conditional like this that we need to apply to this one, uh, but we don't need to apply that one. We don't need to apply this dozen, dozen, dozen to the, uh, the to the repeating group because that's just the standard data source. Like none of those things are selected, so that's where this one comes in. For anyone wanting to, you know, question why we have this extra one here and not there. So uh, next up, so then we're going to copy this expression, and then we're going to paste it here, and. So we're going to look that when this one is not empty. <clears throat> Sorry, did I just do that one as empty again? Uh, when that one's not empty, we're going to need to filter this list by the tag contains this tag's value. And then when we do that, not our data source. Uh, this element is not visible. So let's go and let's check that out with just this one conditional so far. So let's say we show a little bit, oh, okay, cool, cool. And then our tag one, we have this promo here. And uh, it's kind of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 
So uh, let's see. Let's double check over on. Oh yeah. Um, one thing that we'll need to do, and I'm just gonna show off this once. We need. We still need the items until this photo count. So kudos on anyone who caught that. I'm just gonna pause and add that to everything. Okay, so I've gone and added those to all of these, and then you can see now that the that the data source then is gonna be controlled by with the value of that um, of this, which is then has the ability to be controlled by that. So then all that stuff is now tied together. So let's take a look uh, just first at so here we have six items. And our tag one also has six items. So if we say, if we show more here, or if we have a tagged item that has less, then we can see that we now have this thing where, because here with promo, there's actually more to show. But then here with fall and Christmas, there was less. So that's why we saw that. Um, we saw the opportunity on on promo to still click this because there's still more to show. Whereas with the other tags, we can see that they were filtered out. There is no more to show, so that button hides. And I imagine for a lot of people that if you were trying to solve this issue right here, then this is your solution. So let's go ahead and let's knock this off then for the remaining cases. So I'm just going to copy this again down here because I like to be able to pull things off. So I am working here uh, off of off of this and we've done tag so far. So we've done tag is not empty and then we change tag here. So let's bust out a couple more of these conditions. So tag is empty and product is not empty this element is not visible, and then we'll change this one from tag to product. Okay, and then next up, we're gonna actually, I think it's a little quicker if we copy this top one. So if we copy that top one, then we don't delete things, we just add things. Or delete and then add, now we just add. So. We're just gonna add this one here, and then we're gonna change that to not empty, and then make sure that is checked there. Okay, so we've knocked off these three, and uh, actually, whoops, that. Oh. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Oh, so we've knocked off these four, actually. And then, so now we're on to tag and product. So let's go to the one here with tag. And then product as well is not empty. We'll add product here. And then we'll add this element as visible. So now we've done this one. So now we're doing tag and dimension. So I think we want this one with tag. So let's just double check this one. That's tag and product. Now we're tag and dimension. And then we also want to make sure that this one is not empty. So not empty for tag and not empty for dimension. Nice work. All right, so that's that one. Two, two more, folks, and then we'll look at this awesome, shiny new app we built. So now we're dealing with um, product and dimension. So let's see, so this one's one, two, this one's product. So this one will not be not empty. Product is already not empty here. And then we'll add dimension here as well. Okay, and then this one, 
we'll get everything. So we'll also get tag as not empty. And then we'll make tag added to this. And we've done the harder version uh, because then now you can easily back out. Well, harder as in three, you could have four or 10, I don't know. Uh, if you did, you're gonna have a, a long afternoon of setting conditionals, but as long as you keep them straight with the list and do one by the other and double check your work, you'll be good to go. Like you can really actually program something where you only need to do it once and then the magic of bubble takes over or the magic of software rather and so and bubble is a piece of software. So let's double check these elements, visible element, visible element, visible element, visible element, visible element, visible element, visible, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so it looks like we've nailed everything. So now, voila, final test and we're gonna see how this goes. So uh, I think one of these might be small. Ish. Yeah, some of them are so small they don't have any. Well, it looks like there's a potential issue there with uh, All right, so maybe we need to do some 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 checking of our work. Or actually on all of those cases, there we go. We finally found a case where it shrunk and we filtered it. Okay, so so maybe there are some things where there are, there's nothing there in the database that's tagged like that. So four, four. Okay, but so here we can actually see that when brand photos, four, four. So there's something up when, there's something up with the, with the dimension one. Okay, and just sharing that in, uh, I found my own error and I'm showing it off here instead of items from, it's items until, items until, items until, items until. Items until so uh, I I think it's fine to and I'm actually happy more than happy to share those types of things because uh, we can all see <laughs> we've all been there we all know there's actually nothing to explain so uh, let's take a look at that now then that's what I was hoping to have happen yep so uh, that this thing actually goes away whenever there's anything less than six because there's nothing more to show. And so we can see that there is more stuff to show on these ones. But then if we filter it down, there's less to show. So this is really the crowning moment. It wasn't the other one. And, uh, you know, easy to make mistakes in Bubble, easy to have one thing off. And um, so, and so it looks like there's nothing there. So let's refresh one last time. And if we show off everything, we can just see that the whole thing filters basically as expected. So if you made it this far, awesome. Thank you so much for hanging with me. Check out nocodeacademy.co for a course library subscription where I'm adding additional high-level content to there, things like APIs, if you can get a head start on a particular API, um, and more advanced tutorials uh, that get added there all the time. So check it out. Thanks for watching. Give this video a like, and I'll see you in another video.